The megalodon was the biggest shark to ever live. Not only that, it's one of the biggest fish and the largest predator in Earth's history. They've been known to reach lengths of up to a whopping 70 feet. That's over three times longer than the biggest great white shark on record. The females have also been found to be around twice the size of the males. The megalodon could swallow a small car without it even touching its teeth, if cars had been around that. Its teeth could grow to over 7 inches long. It looks like we're going to need a bigger boat, and best make it steel-plated, as this shark can easily gnaw its way through ships. The underwater terror could bite a ship clean in half, with the highest bite force ever calculated for any animal, living or extinct. The force of its ferocious bite was up to 40,000 pounds. That's around 108,000 times the strength of a human's and 10 times the force of a modern crocodile's bite. Its chomp is so strong that it makes the T-Rex's bite look about as powerful as my granny's after she's taken her dentures out. In fact, the Meg was so big and powerful that it had no natural predators. It was the uncrowned king of the seas, swimming freely from ocean to ocean. This cosmopolitan creature was found all over the world, from America to Europe and Australia to Japan, assuming there were countries back then. Meg fossils have been found on every continent except Antarctica. Everybody skips Antarctica. Science tells us that the megalodon went extinct over 3.6 million years ago. But could they still be alive at the deepest depths of the ocean? Only around 80% of the ocean has been explored, and its deepest point, the Mariana Trench, is over 7 miles down. So who knows what's lurking at the bottom? If you did manage to make it down, it is unlikely that you'll run into a meg, though. The sharks, like us, preferred warmer coastal waters. Deep ocean living would be too cold for the beasts, and food would be scarce. Their entire bodies would also have to evolve to avoid being squished by the enormous water pressure down there. It's unlikely they're still around, but not impossible. Some good news, if you do run into one, is that the shark is pretty unlikely to eat you. You are way too small a meal for the megalodon, even if you have a couple of friends with you. This guy eats whales that are over 50 feet long. If you're having a beach party, though, it's a different story. In a beach full of swimmers, the shark very well might creep up, scooping several humans into its giant mouth without even chewing. But wait, let's rewind. How does the shark take down a 50-foot whale? It first bites off its fins, making the whale unable to swim away. It then casually munches it down piece by piece. Because of their size, sharks had to consume over a ton of food every single day just to sustain themselves, like me. All that food made the megalodon extremely heavy. They range from anywhere between 50 to over 100 tons. For context, that's around the same as 7 to 16 adult male African elephants. To fit all this food in, their jaws had to open pretty wide. A megalodon's jaw could span 9 by 11 feet wide. That's easily big enough to swallow two adult humans side by side. The fearsome name megalodon comes from two Greek words, mega meaning big and odont meaning tooth. So combined, they mean what? Big tooth. And it certainly lives up to its name. Just one of its chompers is the same size as a human head. It had 276 humongous teeth in total across five terrifying rows. In all of history, only a couple of saber-toothed cats and the T-Rex had consistently bigger teeth. Now that's a showdown I'd like to watch. The megalodon vanished millions of years ago, leaving only huge teeth to be found by modern archaeologists. They literally disappeared with very few traces left. Scientists believe that, over time, sea levels dropped and the ocean temperatures went down rapidly. Over a third of all marine life was wiped out as the oceans cooled, and a number of animals at the bottom of the food chain plummeted. This had a catastrophic effect on the hungry predators at the top. Sorry, guys. It became way too cold for these sun-loving sharks, too, which made it difficult for them to reproduce since they gave birth in warm waters. The megalodon is usually described as a sort of giant great white shark, but this is just a common myth. In fact, the ancestors of today's great white existed at the same time as the meg. But they weren't best buddies and were even in competition with each other. The great white shark was a better hunter, using its smaller size and agility to snap up the meg's prey quickly. They were also known to eat meg pups, who were only half their size. This didn't help the whole extinction thing. Even infant megalodons were huge, coming in at just under 7 feet. While a great white was no match for an adult meg in a head-to-head -head fight, they sure weren't scared of stealing their food. 
This only left the bigger fish in Wales for the May. But its food supplies began to run out as the whales swam to the cooler new seas. The whales adapted to prefer the colder temperatures, leaving our friend the Meg behind. The megalodons either starved or were frozen into extinction by the Ice Age. Rather than a great white, the megalodon is more like a modern bull shark. It had a short snout, flat lower jaw, and huge pectoral fins to support its massive weight and size. As scary as they are, these sharks were actually caring family guys. Several megalodon nursery areas have been discovered in Florida, Maryland, and Panama. They gave birth to their young in shallow water environments. We know this from discovering loads of tiny megalodon teeth found in these areas. Gee, I wonder if they had nannies, too. But how come there are so many megalodon teeth out there for us to analyze? Well, due to their messy, aggressive eating habits, sharks regularly lose their teeth. They lose a set of teeth every one to two weeks. That's 40,000 teeth in a lifetime. They must rake in a fortune from the tooth fairy. Because of this, their teeth were continuously raining down to the ocean floor. Luckily for us, they're also the hardest part of a shark skeleton, which is why so many teeth have survived and become fossilized. It's fair to say that the first discoveries of the Meg's teeth confused people. Early discoverers thought the Meg's teeth were petrified tongues of ancient serpent creatures. They even used to call them tongue stones. It's also a common myth that the megalodon was around at the same time as the dinosaurs, although this would have been pretty cool. The dinosaurs were wiped out around 66 million years ago, but the megalodons came much later. The oldest meg fossil is only around 23 million years old, but it's tricky to pinpoint the exact date. After all, calendars weren't invented yet. They became extinct way before humans even evolved. The earliest Homo sapiens, which is a fancy name for the first humans, emerged about 2.5 million years ago. But what if the megalodon shark didn't go extinct? Whale populations have dropped drastically since these guys were last round, so there'd be way fewer whales for them to chomp down on. Whales have also gotten a lot smarter and learned new defensive moves, making them way harder to take down. It's estimated that they ate around 12 tons of food each day. If they were still around and eating that much, they'd be forced to eat smaller fish, and there'd be barely enough big fish for us humans to survive on. The naughty megalodons would also be able to track fishing boats and steal the fish that they worked hard to collect. It's safe to say we'd see a lot less fish in the aisles of your neighborhood supermarket. As our ocean temperatures are heating up again, the sharks would also thrive and reproduce faster than ever. There'd be more and more of these giant eating machines in the water, reducing our fish supply even more. It would also cause massive problems for cargo ships and cruising vessels. Imagine coming into contact with one of these bad boys while you're sunbathing on the deck. Even beachgoers would be hard hit. Megalodons give birth in shallow waters, so many of our favorite beaches would quickly become dangerous shark nursing grounds. Hey, where did that beach volleyball game go? They were playing just a moment ago. The largest and most ferocious predator to ever haunt the oceans, the megalodon shark, dominated the seas for centuries before becoming extinct millions of years ago. However, scientists managed to discover very few remnants of the giant shark. Everything we know about the great sea beast we've learned thanks to fossils of its giant teeth, which are just about the size of the average human hand. Scientists estimated the size of the prehistoric shark using calculations based on the measurement of the length of a megalodon tooth. On average, the size of a megalodon shark was 33 feet long. The largest of the species could reach up to 58 feet long. However, these mega sharks may have been even bigger than we ever thought. At the Florida Museum of Natural History, a group of students examined 3D printed replicas of megalodon teeth to calculate the shark's size using the tooth length method. But something was off. Each student calculated a different size for the same shark, with their estimates ranging from 40 feet to 180 feet. A lead paleontologist took a look at the students' equations. He realized that the method they used to calculate megalodon sizes for decades isn't that accurate at all. So they invented a new method to calculate the megalodon size based on the width of the megalodon tooth instead of its length. It turned out that the average megalodon would be around 65 feet long. It's almost double the size scientists previously thought and would mean that the average megalodon is the length of two school buses. A megalodon skeleton has never been discovered. Shark skeletons are made mostly of cartilage, meaning that they decompose quickly. 
Luckily, sharks continuously shed and regrow teeth throughout their lives. One shark can go through 40,000 teeth in a single lifetime. Scientists have managed to study different types of shark species based on their teeth alone. The megalodon shark had around 276 teeth. When they fell out, these teeth landed in seabed, where they stayed for millions of years, fossilizing. Scientists found those teeth, and they're the only real record we have of the megalodon's existence. The word megalodon means giant tooth. Its tooth is around 7 inches long. For comparison, the largest tooth of a great white shark is only 3 inches long. To find a bigger set of choppers, you'd have to go back 65 million years to find the great Tyrannosaurus rex, whose teeth measured a whopping 12 inches. Megalodon teeth have been discovered all over the world. It means that unlike other marine animals of its time, the megalodon was intercontinental. Even today, most sharks and marine animals tend to stick to one sea or ocean. The megalodon shark swam freely around the world, moving between tropical and subtropical waters. Megalodon teeth have been found in every continent apart from the freezing cold waters of Antarctica. When a megalodon makes a starring appearance in a movie or TV show, it's portrayed to look like a giant version of a great white shark. Scientists previously believed that the megalodon and the great white shark both descended from one common ancestor. Still, it's not true. In fact, it's more likely that the megalodon was the arch enemy of the great white shark's ancestor, the broad-toothed mako shark. That means Megalodon wouldn't have looked so similar to the Great White after all. In reality, the Megalodon would have a shorter nose than the Great White, along with longer pectoral fins to give the giant shark a stockier and more threatening build. Not only was the Megalodon the largest shark in the world, but it was also one of the biggest fish ever to exist. An apex predator of this size would have needed a huge diet to keep it moving. The megalodon would have eaten 2,500 pounds of food every day. The megalodon diet consisted of larger species of fish, dolphins, and even other species of sharks. Ancient fossilized whale bones with cut marks of megalodon teeth have been discovered. It means megalodons weren't intimidated by the size and tried to feast on the giant whales of the past. Scientists have used computer simulations to try and work out the hunting style of the ancient shark. Using this technology, scientists have discovered that the megalodon's attack style was very different from that of modern-day sharks. Modern sharks dive straight for their prey's most vulnerable spot, for example, the soft underbelly of a seal. The megalodon's teeth were uniquely suited to biting through tougher areas of cartilage. So, evidence suggests that a megalodon would first chew the tougher fins of their prey, rendering them unable to swim away before launching into their final attack. The mouth of a megalodon was around 10 feet wide and 9 feet tall, large enough for you to swim into without touching any teeth. However, we don't recommend that. Their mouths were so large a megalodon could swallow a small car without even having to bite down on it. Research teams from Australia and the US collaborated to work out the biting power of the megalodon using computer simulations. The results were terrifying. While the modern great white shark has the biting power of 1.8 tons of force, the megalodon could easily chomp down on its prey with a biting power of 18.2 tons. The bite of the megalodon would easily be able to cut through steel and overpower any other predator in the ocean. Scientists believe that the megalodon has the most powerful bite of any creature that has ever existed. The megalodon's bite would easily overpower the T-Rex, which has a biting force of 6 tons. Mysteriously, no one knows exactly when or how the megalodon went extinct. However, several theories are floating around as to how this could be the case. The megalodon had become extinct by the end of the Pliocene, which was a phase of global cooling that spanned over 5 million years and ended over 2.6 million years ago. New evidence suggests that the last megalodon lived at least 3.6 million years ago, right in the middle of the Pliocene era. Another theory claims that these megasharks disappeared because of the changing Earth temperatures occurring during the Pliocene. As the Earth cooled down, the tropical waters of the world's oceans plummeted to colder temperatures. Scientists believe that this led to the extinction of a third of all large marine animals, meaning that the megalodon's food source took a massive hit. Without much prey left to hunt, the megalodon inevitably went extinct. Megalodon sharks would give birth to their pups in waters close to the shore. 
The shallow coastal waters provided a perfect nursery for the newborn sharks, keeping them distant from the larger predators that lurked in the open waters. As ice formed around the Earth's poles and sea levels dropped, these pupping grounds were destroyed. The megalodon pups would have had no choice but to swim in the deep ocean waters, making them more vulnerable to dangerous predators. A new theory suggests that the explosion of a star, called a supernova, could be responsible for the extinction of the megalodon. Around 2.6 million years ago, a supernova over 150 light-years away from Earth lit up the prehistoric sky and lingered there for months. A few hundred years after the supernova had faded, particles of cosmic energy from the star explosion plummeted to Earth. The energy particles carried dangerous amounts of radiation. Researchers believe that this radiation could cause the mass extinction of many marine animals, including the megalodon. Radiation from the particles extended hundreds of yards down into the ocean and was more dangerous for bigger creatures than for smaller ones. The bigger the creature is, the more radiation they would absorb. The 60-foot-long megalodon was large enough to absorb great amounts of radiation. Some people believe that the megalodon is still alive today, lurking at the depths of the ocean waters. But it's unlikely to be true. Megalodons are a warm water species, which means they would be unable to survive in the cold waters of the deep ocean. Most of the megalodon's potential prey live in shallower waters, meaning there would be very little for the megalodon to eat at a deep sea level. Simply put, if there were an animal as big as the megalodon still living today, we would have spotted it by now. If you're into mushrooms and eat them a lot, you'll love the honey mushroom. It's larger than any plant out there. Watermelon, pine tree, even baobab. It's even bigger than an elephant or a megalodon. The mushroom covers miles and miles of the Malheur National Forest in Oregon. And it's the oldest organism on our planet. Some are up to 8,650 years old. The Amazon rainforest is so huge that it can be found in nine different countries in South America. The Amazon River stretches for over 4,000 miles and is the second longest river in the world after the Nile. But there's one river in South America that's even bigger than the Amazon, two times bigger. It's the Hamza River. So why isn't it on the map? Because it runs two and a half miles under the Amazon. Deep in the Amazon, you'll find a river whose name means boiled by the sun. Well, it's not actually boiling but it can reach the temperature you'd need to cook pasta in. The river is steaming, which is a warning for wildlife to stay away. A hot river usually means there's a volcano nearby, but the closest volcano is miles away. The largest known super ant colony, made up of Argentine ants, was found in southern Europe. It's 3,731 miles long. New York to LA is only around 2,500 miles. There are millions of nests and billions of worker ants in it. Those ants are so smart that they can even recognize their peers from opposite ends of the colony. Some scientists believe they can even straddle oceans, because similar ants have been found as far away as New Zealand and Australia. The biggest and oldest meadow on the planet isn't on land. It's in the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. It could be about 100,000 years old. The seaweed this meadow is made of is called Neptune grass, probably because it has a magnificent bluish-green tinge. How big is it? More than two times the size of New Jersey. The largest bird flock ever seen was made up of about 1.5 billion birds swarming over Africa. They flock super fast, sometimes within a few hours, and there can be hundreds of millions of birds in one flock. This red-billed beauty is one of the most populous birds on Earth. Only pigeons and domestic chickens have them beat. There are around 20 to 22 billion chickens. As for animals, rats run the world. There are rats everywhere, and people used to say there were just as many rats as people. Turns out it's not true. But it sure feels like that sometimes. If you want to live in a completely rat-free zone, try moving to Antarctica. As a bonus, it's also an ant-free zone. It might be a problem, though. It's pretty much a people-free zone, too. Imagine the rarest, almost non-existing animal. Did you think of a unicorn? 
Well, back here in real life, saolas are also called Asian unicorns because of their unique horns and the super low probability that you'll ever run into one. They resemble antelopes, even though technically they're cattle. Researchers don't know a lot about them because you'd have to see one to study it. Pando, not pandas, although these guys are unique too, is not just a tree or a forest like many people think. It's a whole tree colony of quaking aspens. The trees get their name from a weird quacking sound they make whenever wind passes through their branches. All the trees are genetically identical. In Utah, there's a tree colony made up of around 47,000 aspens. It covers the area of two Washington, D.C.s. 32,000 years ago, there lived a squirrel who loved seeds, and one day it hid some to feast on later. They stayed hidden for 32,000 years. It isn't the plot of a cartoon or fairy tale. This story is completely true. Scientists managed to find seeds hidden in permafrost over 100 feet down, and they even brought them back to life. What a cute ancient white flower! If you ever travel down the Mekong River, you may have the chance of seeing glowing balls rising from the water and beelining up into the air. Some locals call these things Naga fireballs. Their sizes are all quite different. These reddish balls can be as tiny as a spark and as large as a basketball. The number of fireballs per night varies from dozens to thousands. Scientists don't have any solid explanation about why it happens, but it's probably some sort of flammable gas released by the marshy environment. These fireballs also appear in some stories and fairy tales. The River of Five Colors in La Macarena, Colombia, looks like a liquid rainbow. It has yellow, green, blue, red, and even black shades in it. It's all thanks to a variety of plants hidden inside the river. The red comes from a plant that sticks to the riverbed. We see yellow thanks to the sand. The water itself is blue because it reflects the sky. Algae turns the water green, and the black comes from the black river rocks. Out of all the colors, the red usually stands out the most. Weirdly, there are no fish in this river, just some amphibians, reptiles, and about 420 types of birds. People who live in the rural central part of Norway, near the Hestalen Valley, often witness floating lights of different colors. Some are white, others are yellow. You can even see red across the sky sometimes. They appear both in the daytime and at night. And once, back in the 80s, they were spotted about 20 times a week. They can last just a few seconds or can hang around for as long as an hour. The lights move around, that's why they seem to be floating or swaying. So, what are they? Some scientists think they're caused by ionized iron dust. Others claim it's some sort of combustion between sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen. If you're walking on the beach somewhere in California, don't freak out if you see fish hiding their tails, like dogs sometimes do. Grunions are a type of fish known for their bizarre mating ritual. They dig their tails into the sand in order to lay eggs. The eggs stay hidden in the sand for 10 days. This all usually happens when there's a high tide. 10 days later, when the next high tide arrives and washes the newly hatched fish out to sea, well, ocean, scientists still don't know why they go through all that trouble of hiding their tails down there. On the freezing cold shores of the Baltic Sea, there's a place called the Dancing Forest. The pine trees are all crooked and twisted there. It's probably the unstable sand that made those trees twist that way. Another reason why those trees are so crooked might be the strong winds. Some people claim the reason is more mysterious. They say this forest is a place where positive and negative energies meet. Locals say that if you climb through one of the rings in those trees, it'll add an extra year to your life. Interesting. Walking rocks, also known as sailing rocks, move across one of the many valleys in California, leaving long trails behind them. Researchers took various time-lapse videos of the moving rocks, and they even installed GPS navigators on some of the rocks to prove that they move at some seriously incredible speeds. For rocks, I mean. And they proved that nobody was pushing them when no one was looking. 
Many people believe these stones move this way because of the thin sheets of ice that form overnight when the temperature dips below freezing. Those tricky ice sheets melt away the next day without a trace. Rain isn't common in Oakville, Washington. However, this last story doesn't have any solid explanation. One crazy day, instead of normal raindrops, people in Washington watched translucent jelly-like blobs fall from the sky. They were called the Oakville Blobs. Those who got really close to the rain experienced severe flu-like symptoms soon after. Researchers who studied these raindrops claimed that those blobs contained some sort of white blood cells. Some people believe the blobs were evaporated jellyfish. If that's true, how did they get up there? What were they doing up there? Why did they fall? Ah, so many questions. Hey, could it have been an airliner flying overhead that accidentally emptied their… uh, never mind.